Welcome back to the Express Notes on ACCA paper F9 Financial Management. Um, we are still in a rather lengthy uh, chapter here discussing uh, investment appraisal. As I mentioned before, it is uh, rather core to the, to the paper. So if you could just turn to uh, the appropriate page here in chapter four, um, as shown, adjusting for risk and uncertainty investment appraisal. This is just a uh, semantic distinction that we make between uh, risk and uncertainty and uh, understanding of sensitivity analysis, which uh, in the context of investment appraisal is kind of a stress testing of our NPV to see how far any one variable needs to move in order to reduce the NPV to zero. For example, we have some cash flows here which show an investment and uh, cash inflows, variable costs, and so on, um, with the NPV of 4,224. And based on these numbers, it is possible to calculate various uh, scenarios, which will, uh, or sensitivities better said, which will inform us as to how bad a particular variable has got to move in order to eliminate our net present value. For example, we can see in this particular case, dollar for dollar, an increase in the investment amount uh, to 16,224, 16, just to make that number clear, um, will reduce our NPV down to zero. If the cost of capital, on the other hand, were to rise to 38%, and we would operate on discounting the cash flows here at 38%, it would likewise bring the NPV to zero. In other words, we can say that the 38% is effectively the internal rate of return of this project. Sensitivities allows us to test for other variables. For example, to ask ourselves if uh, the sales volume were to drop, how far would it go to wipe out our net present value? Or if the sales price were to uh, be um, reduced, how far down would we be able to reduce the sales price or how far could it suffer a fall before our project ceases to become uh, viable? In other words, where the NPV reaches the threshold level of zero. So sensitivities can test for each of the variables according to the uh, those selected by the analyst. Scenario analysis is a slightly different way of uh, approaching the sensitivities or the uh, to stress test our cash flows, and that is to see what happens when several variables acting together uh, will, what kind of impact they will have on the NPV of our project. Scenario analysis recognizes the fact that variables move uh, at, in, in tandem with each other, or some variables may move in, uh, uh, be negatively correlated one with the other. But nevertheless, the idea is to do scenario analysis, we need to come up with certain um, movements in different variables to describe a typical scenario and then to put our project to the test to see what would happen when those variables work their way through the system. Now, investment appraisal lends itself to making other sorts of investment decisions. For example, uh, the lease or buy decision. This, is, uh, this takes the form of a company typically wanting to acquire an asset and trying to determine whether it's more favorable to either lease the asset or to buy it outright, possibly with a loan from a bank. Now, we know that leases can be accounted for as operating leases and finance leases. The important thing from an investment appraisal point of view is that we identify what the relevant cash flows are in connection with the leasing arrangement and that we compare this with the scenario 
where the company buys the asset and as a result of buying the asset qualifies for specific writing, written down allowances that generate tax savings. Uh, under a leasing arrangement, uh, since the asset is not owned, the WDAs would not be available to the company. That's just one way in which uh, investment appraisal uh, techniques are useful. Another important area that the student needs to master is asset replacement decisions. In the case we have here uh, shown, uh, there is an asset which can be obtained and used for under one of four scenarios. It can be operated for one year and then replaced with a resale value of 14500 Alternatively, it could be used on different cycles. It could be held for two years before replacement or operated for three years, respectively four years. So we have all the possibilities here. Now the question is, how do we determine which is the cheapest um, alternative for the company? We're talking about the same, in this case, the same asset, which has an initial cost of $20,000. And we would need to take each of the separate scenarios and calculate what the net present values will be of the cash flows corresponding to the respective replacement period or replacement cycle of the asset. In the case of a one-year replacement cycle, for example, one can see that the cash flows are really quite straightforward and they result in a net present value of 8637 Compare that with the replacement cycles for two years and three years and one can see that the cash flows result in corresponding uh, present values of net present values, we should say, of 17272 and 20,878. Now, the key thing here is that these NPVs are single um, number outcomes which cannot be directly compared with one another because the 20,878 clearly refers to cash flows extending over three years, whereas in a one year replacement cycle, we have an NPV which corresponds to only one year. So, what we would need to do is to increase the NPV or extend the cash flows here from one year out to three years in order to make the NPV comparable and the net costs comparable in present value terms to the three-year cycle. But of course, that opens up the problem with the two years. Two years does not correspond to a three-year replacement cycle. So what we would have to do is take the three years through another cycle to six years, two years twice to get to six years. And of course, the one-year replacement cycle would have to be repeated six, um, five times to reach a full extension of six years. Now, that is, that is time-consuming and difficult to do. So in this case, the answer or the trick, and this is the key point, is to convert the net present value number into an equal, so-called equal annual cost which involves dividing the net present value by the annuity factor corresponding, in this case, to a one-year replacement cycle at 10%, which is the discount rate. And therefore, we can restate the net present value number into its, equal, uh, its equivalent annual cost of, in this case, 9,501. And this is, of course, a cost which now, by definition, would repeat itself each year as we replace the asset on an annual basis. We can do precisely the same thing for the NPVs for the two and three year replacement cycles. In this case, we are dividing the two year NPV by the annuity factor at 10% for two years. These numbers are obtained from tables, of course. And now we have a comparable figure. We have an equivalent annual cost number of 9,949, which we can still already see is higher than the cost for a one-year replacement cycle, because the 9,949 is a number that repeats itself every year, and each two years worth of 
equivalent annual costs have a present value of 17,272. So we're simply restating and extending the NPV into a string of equal annual costs. This is what makes these costs comparable with the ones we have above. Do the same thing for three years and presto, we end up with an equivalent annual cost, which is the least of the three, 8,394. Apart from the financial gymnastics that are being uh, displayed here, get behind these numbers and understand what they are effectively saying. That is essential to understanding the concepts and the application of these uh, concepts in paper F9. The uh, final part of this uh, section of the course is looking at the profitability index, which is defined as taking in a project the present value of your cash flows and dividing them by the investment amount. This is basically a way of trying to relate the, pres the cash flows in the project to the initial investment amount. In this case, the rule will be if the profitability index is greater than one, i.e. if the present ca value of cash flows is greater than the investment amount, i.e. NPV is greater than zero, then we should accept the project. And if the PI, the profitability index, is less than one, then we should reject the project. Um, one can see here a number of uh, calculations which have been made to relate the to relate the net present value of uh, cash flows for these four projects to the initial investment amount. This is a modified PI. We can see here that the numbers come out less than one in all cases simply because instead of dividing. Um, 40,000 by 30,000, which would follow the definition as above, I've set them forth in a slightly different way, and I've taken the net present value in order to rank our project. I leave it to the student to make the calculations according to the definition here. You can put them in the column here, and you will be able to determine the rankings of the projects are precisely the same whether we define our profitability index as the present value of cash flows divided by the investment or we were take, would, would take our net present value divided by the investment amount in order to calculate, let's call this a modified profitability index. The ranking that occurs between projects is unambiguous and consistent between the two ways of calculation. Capital rationing, finally, is concerning, uh, makes a distinction between soft rationing, which would be the kind of uh, self-imposed limitations on acceptance of projects um, that are undertaken by a company. This can be because a company may feel that they have uh, too few management resources to be able to execute the project uh, to implement it properly, even if it's a feasible project from an NPV point of view. The hard rationing, which is less typical and um, for major companies probably doesn't practically occur, would be if the market itself were to impose constraints on a company's ability to raise capital in order to fund projects. This would be really a uh, a defect in the or a market dysfunction if this were to be the case and one would typically find that soft rationing is perhaps more in evidence in practical um, in, in actual business practices.